welcome to another edition of the program, Total Woman on AD4 TV Radio. My name is Mute Olori. Statistics show that women in government are underrepresented in most, if not all, countries worldwide. In many countries, women have had inadequate opportunities in social participation, especially in thriving for political rights and power in the government and different institutions. Advancing women in the ranks of government office has therefore become important because gender balance ensures that a wider range of perspective is brought to bear on policy making and service delivery. Today, the demand globally is that every government should work towards achieving gender equality in democratic um, governance and increase women participation and access to politics. So on the episode of our program today, my guest is an activist who is passionate about women and the girl child. She's an entrepreneur, educationist, and an author. Please join me to welcome Dr. Carol Dixon Olonda. Nice having you on the show today, Mark. Thanks for having me. Thank you, welcome. All right, so let, let's, let's begin with um, Looking at your profile, your profile says that uh, if women are included in governance, their unique natural endowment will play a big role in involving a stable and developing society. What, what do you mean by that statement? That statement is what it is because women are like incubators. Women uh, they are producers. They are women are very creative. Now, a, if if you give a woman a lemon, she will return back to you a lemonade. Mm. If you give a woman a seed, she will bring back a child to you. If you give a woman a house. She will bring back a comfortable home for you. That shows the creative ability that the woman has that she can bring to the boardroom. That's very in in inspiring. So women have what it is naturally um, to take care of any situation. So why do you think that a lot of women are not involved in either politics or um, governance or even you find out that uh, certain organizations women don't get to the top or it's so difficult to find women in managerial or um, executive position what if we have all this why is it so difficult then why is it not just natural to just a woman to take over uh, I think uh, we are seriously in most nations and uh, maybe nations of in this nation or of ours being led by tradition and religion. Uh, so for that reason, uh, most women who are even very strong women upstairs, women who are intelligent, are not allowed you know, to come to managerial posi positions because of gender issue. Mm. So it's not the women that are limiting themselves, it is the uh, what they, they have met on ground that is limiting them but if they are given opportunity to to sh showcase what they have women are incredible leaders mm, mm, mm. so is that what inspired you to go into advocating for women and for the girl child oh yes uh i see that in countries where women are given opportunities, such countries are doing very well. Now, in position, managerial positions, uh, where w women are given an opportunity to manage, you know, you see the productivity is high. Now, come back to our own country here. Look at women like uh, um, Iwela Okonjo, you know. She's doing so well going so high, you know, because she's given opportunity. But I want to say that there are many women out there 
who don't have such opportunities, but they are great, intelligent women. They are we, women who things will not die in their hands if al allowed to come on board with the men in, the, in decision making and in governance. But I think that uh, where we find ourselves, the system, the tradition, the religion, sort of limits women. So, but I, I, I feel that if we talk more about women and we encourage women more and we empower women more, the country will do, will do better because what we have to bring on board, uh, it may not be exact, exactly what the men are doing, mm -hmm. but we have more colorful, you know, uh, productive ideas that can move systems forward that some women have, but they don't have opportunities. So I am, I am, I am greatly uh, desiring that more women are given opportunities to showcase the talents and their creative ab abilities to move systems forward. Okay, let, let's talk about some of the ways you are going about this. Okay. I, I know that you have, uh, you organize capacity building for women. Yes. You know, and uh, for, so that they were able to contribute um, for positive. Uh, what call it? positive and quantitative yeah. because contribution to nation building and uh, leaving a legacy behind. So let's look at some of the programs that you have put in place in your organization to see that uh, women are empowered, you know, and have the proper um, information to put systems in place. Yeah, well, um, we organize programs uh, for capacity building and then uh, I bring in uh, professionals, you know, from different fields to teach women, you know, to be able to build women up, build up their, their value system, build up their confidence level, build up uh, whatever they have, they can showcase it, you know, build up their, their self-esteem, knowing that they are not just ordinary women by creation. Women have been empowered by God. They have been engraced by God. That's why you see, uh, women are naturally uh, uh, intuitive. You know, they, they can see far. Women are deep. Hmm. Women are not just ordinary people at the surface level. Women, if you see how God even created the woman, you will see that God took time to create the woman, mm -hmm. you know. He, he, the man is just like one, one figure, you know, figure one. Let uh, we call it, yeah, figure <laughs> one. Yeah. But when it comes to how God took time mm -hmm. to create the woman, when a woman stands, you know, side by side by a man, you look at her cuffs from her chest to her back level. You know, you see calves there. And the woman does not only carry empty calves, those calves nurture lives. Mm. The, 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 the calf we have in front is a factory, a milk factory. You know, so we try to, uh, uh, you know, organize, you know, trainings and seminars, workshops for women and bring different experts, you know, professionals to teach women or how they can even uh, bring up what they have mm. on board, you know, showcase what they have so that the world will know that we are not just empty vessels. We are not created, we are, we are not an afterthought, you know. We are created for a purpose, we are created for divine assignment, and we can actually fulfill our assignment if, if we, if, if we know what we have. Mm. So this training tend to build women's um, uh, capacity, build their confidence level, build their identity, and then build their talents, and then encourage them to exercise themselves in the areas of their strengths mm. so that they can be better women. Now, why do you think that women limit themselves? Because I see a lot of programs being put in place, first of all, to make a woman know that, look, you are someone, you are this. It's a lot of effort. Mm. Why? I, I also realize from young girls, because I, I, I work with 
um, with young people a lot. And I discovered that sometimes when I go to schools, the first thing you will find out that you need to do for a girl child is to first of all build, boost her confidence mm. and talk about having a positive self-image. You don't have that much more with the boys. Mm. Why do you think that women are limited, should I say? Or what, what, at what point did... Um, Okay, why do you think that we need to boost our confidence? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to pick my words so that... Because I don't know, is it that we, when a girl is born, we're just born with the fact that, look, uh, your, 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 your self-esteem is eroded, your, your, your second video. Is it, is, it, is it for birth? Is it by the fact that we're female? Is it... Why, how? Why do we have to make such an effort to build the, the, the self-esteem of a woman? Um, for me, I think uh, uh, we need to go back to the basis, the foundation. Some of the foundations are faulty. You know, if a woman is born into a home where uh, there is no solid foundation, uh, the parents are absent in the home. They are there, but they are not there. They are not able to you know, fine-tune the characters, the strength of their girl child. Now, I want to give myself as an illustration. You know, growing up, my mother told me that at best, I was the third girl. The first girl was late. The second uh, child, girl. Then the third child come in again, girl, in a community of, of ours that have value for the male child. Mm. Now, my mother told me that when my father came back home and you know, she, he was told, your wife has delivered, just what? from the year, yeah. you know, he was rejoicing. He wasn't told the sex of the child. Mm. But when he came inside and met my mother, my mother said, as soon as he heard, he just touched used torchlight, it was in the night, mm. to look at, at the child, the girl child, and ask uh, my mom, what's the sex of your baby? And my mother said, he's a girl. He looked at me and hissed, mm. and did not touch me, and went back unhappy. Why? Because he was expecting my mother to bring forth a male child. Because in our community, that is what they value. They feel that the woman has nothing to offer. The woman is weak. The woman is going to just end up as a wife, as a, a, a child factory in the family. Just get married and start producing children, and that is the end of the story. But growing up, my mother tried to, because I met my mother, a, you know, a classroom teacher, tried to build confidence in me. He said to me, go girl, you are good for who you are. You can achieve so much, even better than men. And then uh, my father, blessed memory, he's late now, but my mother is still alive. Some years ago, I traveled home. My father said to me, Carol, I have I've heard so much about the exploits you are doing in ministry work and in business, and the way you are organizing your home, and so many women are learning from you. He said to me, I am very proud of you. That was the child he hissed at, because that child is a gay child. Now, me, I grew up on my own with my intuitive ability and creative sense. I said to myself, Wherever great women got to in this world, I am going to get there. Because those who get, got to high position of leadership, who are making mark, they don't have two heads. And so I started building up myself, reading books, listening to tapes, watching you know, programs on telly of royalty, so that I know how to carry myself when I get to that position. And so it has been what it is, because 
I, I, I think basically it's a foundational problem. Wow. I know tradition contributes to it, but if we correct it from the foundational level, if my mother took it at that, and I'm growing up, and I took it at the fact that my father hissed at me, and I just sit back at home, bemoaning that situation, mm. I will not be here today to say what I'm saying. But I took up that challenge, and I said, I am going to be an intelligent woman. So, so much to take in. What an inspiring story. I'm sure that you have learned something, hmm. you know, and I, I, I keep saying attitude is everything. The yeah. way you look at a situation That's it. and the decisions you make is all about you, but not about people that are around you. We're going to be talking about the family influence when we come back. Okay. We'll take a short break. Please don't go away. It's still Total Woman on AD4 TV Radio. I can be all I ever dream of. Thank you very much for staying with us. You're welcome back. So it's still the Total Woman on AD4 TV Radio, and we've been talking about um, family, um, building the woman, about women understanding who she is. Uh, my guest, Dr. Carol Dixon Olonda, has been using her own personal experience to share with us. I mean, she, despite the fact that she grew in an environment where patriarchy reigns, she never allowed the situation to determine who she is. And she's been doing a lot of um, capacity building, helping women and the girl child to, to look inward, find out who, who am I, what are the skills I have, what, are the, what, what, what is that uniqueness about me that I can bring to the fore and contribute to national development or even within the community I find myself. So that's what we've been talking about on the program. So now, um, Doctor, you are the president of... Um, the foundation, foundation of family values international Good. and we know that family values differ from one family to the other mm -hmm. so as the president of this organization what what actually does this values entail yeah um talking about values uh it has to do with the way we do things in our family settings our belief system the discipline we put in place, the morals. Now, we discover that in many families, you know, of course, these days, young people growing up, they, we see that uh, uh, the family values have eroded so seriously. And so um, I am on a campaign to restoring back family value system to the family. Because that is where it starts from. Uh, it has to do with how we train our children. The boy child and the girl child. How do we bring them up? What time as family mem members, as father and mother, what time do we have to spend with our children? Do we have time to discuss with them, to know them well? Do we talk with our children as parents? So the, 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 the ball of establishing family values lies in the court of parents. Now, if you are well brought up by your parents, you will exhibit good values in the society. If you are not well brought up, you will also exhibit negative ill values in the society and so uh, 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 we, we with sort of um, bring we bring people together families together and we teach them to teach their children we teach them to nurture their children now we discover that in the family system things are going the way they are going because uh, uh, some men just marry from the streets they don't know who they are getting married to. A, a girl that does not have proper, you know, home training will not uh, change overnight. Mm. Will not be reliable 
as a woman in the home and as a wife, cannot be a good wife, cannot be a good mother to nurture the children, cannot be a good woman for herself. Why? Because of that missing link, mm. family values. It is not there. Uh, but we, we think that through seminars and trainings, we can reinstate it back to family system. For instance, it is the responsibility of um, uh, fathers and mothers to be, be able to teach their, their young children when they wake up what to do in the house. Mm. Clean their house, greet, the, greet your father and your mother, teach them respect. Teach them how to respect parents and how to respect elders. Teach them uh, how to respect their husbands when they get married. Teach them how to set table. Teach them how to, how to cook. Both the boy child and the girl child, these are all values that if they are not there, you know, families begin to have problems when they get married. You see that early marriage, f well, one to two, three, four years, you know, the, 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 the couples are contemplating uh, divorce. divorce. They want to go apart. They, they feel that, you know, they are not seeing what they expected. Mm. Now it is because what they expected was not imputed into their wife's life by their, by their parents. Or even the husband's life. Or, because, or even the... Because, we, because we've seen some men, today yeah, that some don't men have are it. becoming very irresponsible. So let's look at the ways that your organization, uh, the extent you have gone mm. to be able to help families build a solid um, uh, uh, structure within their home. Yeah, I would say that we have gone to a very large extent mm. in doing this work because the, uh, the after effect and the testimonies we hear from men, I've had men walk up to me mm -hmm. and thank me for this program I'm organizing and the way I'm teaching the women, you know, t to be respectful and honor their husbands, you know, uh, serve your husbands with good plates in their home. For instance, my husband has his teacup, his spoon, golden spoon, and his plates. I do have mine too. You know, I respect people. But my children and those who come to the home know that daddy's plate, nobody uses it to serve any other person. That, those are value systems. You know, it's a kind of way of honoring my husband. I, I, I serve food not with careless plates, you know, and with uh, uh, qualitative uh, uh, plates and uh, settings. When you see it, you know that a king wants to eat at the table. Mm -hmm. You know, I taught my children same system, and they are doing it in their family, you know, uh, home. So if we are able, if the man is able to sit with his wife, and they are able to come to uh, a, a conclusion on the kind of family they want to raise, the kind of children they want to raise, the kind of future they want for their children, then they will sit down to know that, you know, Rome was not built in a day. And that's why I would want to say that you two, you're an embodiment of so much. You, you run the advocacy, you run this, uh, uh, the FF, um, FFI. FFI, and then you also have a magazine. Yes. Women have a life. Tell, tell me about it. You know, the first thing that intrigued me about this magazine was uh, Woha is a woman have a life. Yes. What, 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 hmm. what were you thinking when you say women have a life? Is hmm. it that women don't have a, have a life? Or what, what exactly were you trying to uh, pass with this uh, magazine? Yeah. Women the have a life. The message I'm trying to pass here is uh, that uh, every woman should have a life because i discovered that most women once they get married their identity is lost once they start bearing missing somebody mm. they they feel that that is the end of life for me that's just the beginning of a long journey It's the beginning of a long journey there are so many things you know, that we need to still sit with in life, you know, to become important women. I discovered that most ma women, when they marry, they just become a production factory. Hmm. They just produce children year in, year out, year in, year out. But be before you know it, they have aged. 
And at the end of the day, they never had a life of theirs. They just uh, uh, sat at home frying chips, frying potato, frying eggs, and co cooking good meals is part of morals. But your life as a woman should not end there. Cook good meals and also be able to package yourself to have a brand. Be known with a brand. You know, I, I discovered that most women just run with that one-legged scripture that says women are weaker vessels. And so they sit back. And so they, they become non-useful in the society. And so I feel that I, uh, we need to give a voice to Woha. Woman, have a life. If they remove you are a Mrs. Um, Olori. Olori. Okay, Mute Olori. Now, if they remove the title, Mrs., Mrs. and they remove Olori from your name, now, okay, Mute comes to play. Now, if you, you are introduced in a public function as okay, Mute, do you still have value before the people? Hmm. That's what I'm talking about. So it's not all about just our status. You know, uh, what's the status? I am doctor, professor, Mrs. You know, if they remove it, that's that Mrs. Hmm. And they remove that doctor. Are you still valuable? Can you stand for yourself anywhere in the public? Can you say what you stand for? So I... I, it's a sort of challenge to, and a motivation, yeah, yeah. you know, to the women for that, that, that you, you have more, you can be more, you can be you more, you have a potential, no, yeah, that, you have all that God has given it to yes, you. you know, to showcase, you know, uh, better delivery, bring better delivery, uh, bring better ideas to the boardroom, bring uh, <laughs> uh, productive, you know, uh, ideas that can move systems forward. I think that some women are doing great being women and others can emulate such women mm. to do great or even better than great women. Wow, amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Kara, for coming on, on, on Total Woman. I mean, what you've just said is what the Total Woman should be. That's it right. should just be all round. All round. Um, just like um, I want to ask you how you combine your responsibility okay. as a wife, a minister of God, uh, a writer, a publisher, yeah. so many. Mm. Yes. Uh, number one, I believe that what is working for me is yeah. grace. Grace from God. Uh, God has endowed me with his grace and his abilities. And that is moving me forward. <laughs> Secondly, I have um, a very good workforce that are supportive. I believe in teamwork. I don't work alone. I have a strong team. In my place where I come from, I have a very solid team. We meet, we reason, we brainstorm, you know, and uh, we, 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 we talk about issues on how we can move our lives and family forward and how we can be useful in the society and contribute positively to the societal system, to move the society forward. Uh, uh, for instance, I, I produced this magazine, Woman Have a Life, which I will be launching in this Abuja very soon, maybe towards the end of this year. Yeah. I want to I use this as an opportunity to say that women can do more. Mm. This is my brain work. Nobody did this for me. It's my brain work, and I used my money to sponsor it. So if I can do it, any other woman can do it. All we need to do is go deep into us and bring out what yeah. we have. Dr. Caro, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Because I know that we have so many to talk about. That's but right. I know that every woman watching us today has learned something Great. from you. So Great. thank you so much for being my guest on the You're show welcome. today. You're welcome. Well, you've thank heard you. It. You've heard it. You can take your lemons that life has given to you as a woman and make lemonades out of it. And take your lemon with so much pride that everybody wants to see that there's beauty in that lemon and would desire it. All right? So take care of yourself. Have a life, woman. 
that's the message I want to leave with you today. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Muti Olori, and I'll be with you again next week. God bless you. Bye-bye.